So I hope so far you enjoyed conference talks, next 2.14 updates, and I was the same as me, excited about upcoming next year updates. Uh, today I'm going to continue with some next internal news to see what we are currently working on, what are the next steps, and what we should expect from next releases. So with next year, we created the first repository, which allowed us to rethink about most of the solutions that we have implemented in next 2 and open room for new possibility and ideas. We started by doing major rights to the essential parts, including view app template, builder and render modules, and command line interface. We are moving away from using giant classes to split logic using functions. This makes source code more readable and also more consistent with the rest of the view ecosystem. We drop supporting deprecated features from Next2 and also any workarounds that we required for Next2 for V2. Also, the Repository structure is now much more simplified. This means that new contributors can quickly jump into the source code, understand it, and start contributing right away. With Next3, we have first class, class TypeScript support. It means that all of the internals, including core and view app, are typed whenever you are starting to create a new module or a Next plugin, can directly see what's available in the context without even checking documentation and being sure that the types are correct. There's no longer to use any CLI, any Xero CLI like Next.js or any Xero package like Next types to support TypeScript because it's already built in. Of course, it is supported for view components out of the box, so we can directly start using Composition API with TypeScript. And also, it is supported for the runtime part, including NextConfig, several middleware and upcoming functions using an in-house solution that we created called GT. With Next3, we also rebuilt the builder. Uh, this new builder supports presets, and especially ESP preset, which is three times faster than Babel during development time. And also, this means that any Webpack functions can be toggled also, we upgraded Webpack version to version 5 with file system cache support. This means that the second time that you start next step, it's leveraging that cache to make this much faster. And also, Webpack 5 is supporting more exciting features, including module federation that we are currently working about to see how are the integration possibilities with that. With Builder Rewrite, we also now can finally support multi app. This has two main use cases. First is extendable projects using Thames. So basically, if you have a company that has different websites and these different websites are based on the same source structure, you can uh, base and extend your website on, from that team. And also this allows to split the project by logic. For example, if you have a really big web shop, you can create modules, for, and for each module, you can have separate pages directory. This is especially more useful for projects with lots, lots of components and multiple modules. And for next to it was somehow hard to split the logic. But now, with this multi-app, we can split it by functionality. With next to we also did a major rewrite for the renderer. First of all, we needed we want the render for view 2 3, so we ported it from view 2. And this is supporting Webpack source maps, it's supporting module isolation during development time to avoid memory leaks, and also same format for we want the renderer can be used for several bundles without using we want the renderer. And the most exciting news about new render is that now we separated the server-side rendering from server middleware. Uh, usually this is the most important and most required part for supporting first-class serverless. And when we are deploying a serverless Lambda, we usually don't need most of this middleware, such as compression or server static or lags. And with Nux2, it was almost impossible to remove them. But with Next3, we have pure server-side rendering function. And also, this server-side rendering function is independent from most of the dependencies. It means that we can have faster startup time, which is critical for serverless support. So with new renderer, we can finally have proper serverless support. And also, this uh, refactor can allow new users to use the SSR in conjunction with other frameworks, such as Express, 
and you are free to choose your backend framework. With Next3, now we are finally going to only support Evergreen browsers by default. This means that, yes, of course, we are dropping IE11 support, which is anyway going to be officially deprecated by the August of next year. And of course, now the default targets is modern. We will still have a new legacy option. So for any, if for any reason you need to support older browsers, you can turn this option on, but the default target is now modern. And the most important part for the modern support is that we are now upgrading the baseline of modern. In the past version of the NICE, we was considering a browser that is supporting modules is a modern browser. But over the time, these browsers are going to be legacy because uh, currently, for example, we still need some balance transpilation for modern bundle as well. And these browsers are going to be legacy. So we are upgrading the baseline from module support to latest uh, versions of browsers with uh, reasonable uh, coverage of the users. And this means also we have less transpilations and this tra less transpilations means that we have much faster build time. One of the really biggest updates we are going to introduce alongside with Next 3 is Next Module Utils. Before that, let's see how currently we, we can create a module with Next 2. Basically, with Nuxo, we have to export a function, and this function is bounded to some uh, utilities from module container that is coming from the Nuxo core. These utilities allows us to easily interact with the core, add some functionalities. For example, for adding a plugin, we can have we can use the add plugin utility, or for hooking into an internals. But it has some problems. Uh, let's see how currently a module other can depend on one of these utilities. If we introduce a new utility in, for example, let's say Max 2.1, uh, module others should always check that if the user is also using this version of the Nux, because otherwise the module is not working. And this is basically meaning that if a module needs to depend on this utility, they have to deprecate supporting for Nux 2.0.0. This might be easy for upgrading for end user, but it's also not always the case, and much others usually don't like this. This can be even more worse when we are just introducing a fixed rate utility, much others should be, uh, still be worried about it and always check that users are using latest version of Nux, otherwise their module may have some bad behavior just because users are not using the expected version of the Nux. And also when we are introducing Nux3, it's going to be hard for module others. They have to always check that is it Nux2 or Nux3 compatible and they have to use different ways to interact with the core. And when, this is the same also for the next major version. And if we introduce a new utility in Nux3.1, for example, we have to ensure this is backported to Nux2, otherwise the module is going to stop working for previous major version of Nux. And we really want to make, make it much easier for module others and uh, don't worry about Nux version and it should work out of the box. So far, the biggest limitation of current module spec is this version against the core that modules should have to always ensure that their users are using the right version of Nux against their module. For applying default options, much others should always do it by themselves, which is something repetitive and also something that could be handled in the core or someplace. Current spec doesn't support to have runtime-only modules, which means that, for example, if you have a module that needs to hook for some rendering part, for example, for CSS and JS solutions, they have to bundle the entire module to the production bundle as well. This is usually not a big deal, but especially when we are going to support serverless, this is a big deal because this dependence is cost and modules should support a way to only push some runtime only part of them to the bundle. Uh, also the ordering sometimes is a problem when two modules are depending on each other or conflicting on a hook. The ordering of them is important and currently the case is that inside their documentation they have to specify users that please use this special order. 
This can be partially resolved by using more of Nux hooks, but uh, still there are some problems with that. With Nux module utilities, which is an external package, we are basically fixing this independent versioning problem and it's up to module others to use latest module utils and whenever they are using latest module utils, they are sure that even if users are using an older version of Nux, their module is still going to work. And something really cool about it is that using these utilities, module others can ensure they have not only backward compat, but they also have forward compatibility. So if module others start using this package from now, they can ensure that they have at least a partial support for next tree whenever it's published. This also allows module others to define their modules using hooks and just meta instead of a function like black hooks function and this is really important for developing experience because this way next can have a prediction of the module behavior and also doing applying for example default options doing off type checking for options and also checking the correct next version for users and it's making the job much easier for module others so i'm really looking forward to make it public before releasing next three so far, we was talking about just Nux 3 and upcoming features. So you might say that, what about Nux 2? You know, we are aware that many projects are still using Nux 2 and the maintenance is going to be a concern. So the good news is that we are going to keep active maintenance for Nux 2 until the entire ecosystem is ready for both Vue 3 and Nux 3. And until that time, you can safely use Nux 2 for your existing projects. In the meantime, we are accepting every kind of bug fix and we are going to use faster lyric cycles without edge testing as uh, currently we have really good coverage for the test and the source code of the next two is so stable right now. And for feature wise, uh, it's feature freeze, uh, but we are still going to accept important features or backported features from next three. And also entire migration guide and tools will be provided soon. So whenever we are ready to upgrade to the next tree, it's really easy for you because we have already document everything for that. For next two, we are going to introduce a really big change is upgrading minimum Node.js from 8 to 10 because Node.js 8 is currently the minimum for next two, but it's end of life and lots of dependencies currently require Node 10, including PostCSS 8 and many of the Webpack loaders. So this is a semi-breaking change, but good news is that this is only a breaking change for the build part. For example, if your serverless platform is still using Node 8, there is no problems because these dependencies are only used for development time. And while we are aware that Next3 is going to take a time to be adopted to the community, we are going to introduce some backports to Next2 so you can currently start making your project prepared for the next three upgrade and also view three existing ecosystem. We already have Next.js Composition API wrapper. You can use it to migrate your current project to Composition API as well as TypeScript module. With upcoming module utils, module others can already start migrating their module in a way that they can be more sure that it's easier for next three and next to upgrade, so they do not need to keep two major versions, one for next to support and one for next three support. And it's going to support cross major version support for modules. Next functions will be also backported to the next two. Currently it's pending because mainly we wanted to have first class several support for next functions, but they are going to be backported to the next two, so still we can also uh, start refactoring the source code to use next function instead of server middleware and getting it prepared for next three upgrade and also we are backporting uh, server-side pre-rendering uh, which is basically rendering in the back in the background and also a stellar strategy using uh, Next.js module which is compatible with both next2 and next 3 so this functionality can also be backported to the next two and before migrating to the next three, we can leverage from all of these goodies. I really hope I could cover most of the parts for the next three. 
we are really looking forward for making next three and next module duties public very soon and i would be really happy if we can uh, have a chat if you have any feedbacks or ideas you can directly contact us in the discord and thanks for your attention